What's up everyone, Steven here from TechMaker Studio. In this episode, we're gonna keep going with our NFT generative project. And uh, we're gonna start trying to hook up the user interface with React um, for our smart contracts we've been working on. To get started, we actually need to deploy these contracts that we've written to our local blockchain uh, for testing. And I'm using Ganache, uh, which is another product developed by Truffle. Uh, makes it super easy just to run a blockchain on your computer, uh, which is great. And um, so let's go ahead and just try to run Truffle Deploy. And let's see if this works. Should, shouldn't get any problems from it. Um, we should also see that um, the first account in our list there so we deployed, first of all, let's look at this. We deployed a migrations contract, which comes baked in with every Truffle project. Um, we deployed simple storage, which is something um, from the setup. Um, probably also comes baked in with all the Truffle projects, if I remember correctly. But anyway, and then we have our frog contract. So if we go back and we look at Ganache, you'll see that our account, the first account in the list, account zero, uh, has spent a little bit of ETH deploying, and you can see we've got uh, five transactions over there. Um, another thing I, I did also is in my browser, I went ahead and imported one of the private keys from Ganache, and I set up uh, localhost 7545 as an endpoint. Um, basically add a custom RPC. I think I actually edited... Um, there's normally, I think, if I'm remembering correctly, there's a default localhost 8545, and Ganache runs on 7545. I, I addressed this in a previous video. But anyway, so I, I got, if you click on the keys over here, you can pull up private keys from all of these. I could do it. It doesn't matter just to save time. Um, I'm not, I'm going to skip that step. Um, but anyway, it's pretty straightforward. So what we need to do is start up our app. Um, over here now that these are uh, deployed um, we should be able to cd down into client and then run npm start and this should open up uh, localhost 3000 if I'm not mistaken and um, probably prompt us to connect our metamask over here maybe it's taking forever okay there we go um, insufficient funds. Let me reject this and let me connect account 10 and refresh. And so now it's going to ask me to confirm the stored value is 5. Okay, so basically what this means, um, and you can read it for yourself, if your contract's compiled and migrated, below will show a stored value of 5 by default. Basically, there's a little bit of boilerplate or not boilerplate, I guess, but just kind of a, a template for having a smart contract and some React code talking to it that's already set up for us. Um, so I'm going to control C and then open up this uh, file or open up this directory in our code editor. And we're just going to kind of work on the front end a bit and get this uh, talking to our NFT contracts. So the first thing we should do is just quickly scan... Uh, what all is in here so we have this contracts directory inside of our source you can see we have the simple storage the migrations the frog okay if we open up uh, app.js first thing you're gonna see first of all this is using an old style of react which is this class style um, where most of the stuff I'm doing now is with functions and hooks if you're following along with any of the other stuff um, so I don't actually want to do too much in here. I want to just do the minimum required to actually get uh, this working. So if we look at what's happening, so we have component did mount. We're getting web3, which is coming from this get web 3 js over here. Um, we're going to kind of skip past a lot of this stuff because we don't actually want to go into all the details of exactly what's happening, or at least I don't. Um, what I want to do is just swap out our example okay so we don't really want simple storage contract we want frog if I can type and then over here we can just say frog.json um, instance contract frog.abi again I can't type 
and then deployed network is frog.networks network ID let's see if we got anything else that we need to look at okay so run example is gonna try to call code that doesn't exist so let's save this and let's see what kind of error we get I think uh, I need to npm start again And I should definitely get some kind of error potentially in my console over here. Yeah, contract method set is not a function. So what we're going to want to do is jump back over here and fix this to, A, I don't think we want to run the example right now, right? I don't think we want to do that um, because uh, we actually want this to be like an on click kind of deal. So first of all, let's get rid of run example here. Um, I think we don't need that call back anymore. Let's save this and see what happens. Okay, so now if we refresh, it's not prompting us to connect or to sign a transaction. I'm already connected. If I disconnect, let's just uh, kind of sanity check along the way here so I can disconnect and let me refresh and do I still have another account connected I may because I've got so many test things here so I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect this one maybe I need to have all of all of these just disconnected okay so let me switch to my account 10 which actually has ETH in it on this network okay so when I refresh it's prompting me to connect and I'm going to connect account 10. I just wanted to make sure that I didn't screw anything up there. And then what we're going to do is come down here and we're going to delete all of this. Like that. And now we should have a blank screen. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump back over in the code. And what I'm going to do is add a link. And I'm going to kind of sanity check my way through this on click equals mint uh, NFT and then we'll just say mint frog or something like that there and then what I need to do is define a function it needs to be async uh, mint NFT and for now we'll just console.log minting like this and let's go see if that worked Uh, mint NFT. Do I need to say this dot mint NFT? Okay, so now if I click, you can see minting. Yeah, my syntax is a little bit weird because I haven't been using these class style components for a, for a minute. And you can see actually this has got some styling that um, I'm just gonna ignore. I guess. Well, let's look. We actually don't need any uh, style, so we can just like axe all this and hopefully it puts us there and then I'm gonna give this uh, an href of nothing basically so it looks like a link and then I'm gonna make this take an argument e and the first thing we're gonna do is say e dot prevent default and let's click it and it looks good so everything's working we're getting our console log so the next thing we need to do is actually talk to the contract okay so back over in the code one thing that we need to do first of all let's try this really quick so let's do console.log this and let's just see what this is so this is undefined but if we do dot bind this again this is just like a a trick you have to do in the old style of react so now you can see that we have the app um, so now if we do this dot state right here, let's see what's in the state. So now you can see we have accounts, we have a contract. Okay, so what we want to do in here is say const, and then we're going to sort of destructure this and say accounts and uh, contract equal this dot state. Okay, and let's console dot log accounts. 
Okay, so there we go, there's that. And let's do our contract. Just making sure everything is working. Okay, cool. So now what we want to do is say um, basically await contracts.methods.purchase, if you will recall what we called that. Um, so we're going to await that. And then we're going to say dot send. And then we're going to say from accounts the first one and we're gonna say value is actually I need the whole state don't I so I could say web do I have web 3 in the state um, uh, can't tell I think I do I think I put it in yeah okay it gets added where is that there so set state web 3 so basically I'm just using the whole state okay cool it doesn't matter so we're gonna say value equals web3 dot utils dot uh, two-way and we're gonna say 0 0.05 ether okay so and we don't need to console log the contract now alright so if we click this and it prompts us to do a transaction okay so you can see we're being prompted to submit a transaction for 0 0.05 ETH let's confirm let's go check our Ganache and you can see that our first address has over a hundred ETH and then our address that we actually submitted this from has 0 0.05 less um, let's actually stop this and let's say let me change up a level we'll do truffle console and which account was that that was this account okay so what we can do is say uh, frog equals await frog dot deployed and we can say frog.balance of and then pass in this address and let me jump back to the start uh, sorry about that we'll say um, let balance balance equal await and then we'll just print out bal and we'll say uh, parse int bal and we have one and let's see uh, uh, let's do the same thing here really quick um, and we're gonna check the owner of I shouldn't have done that that way we'll say owner of one so this should be ID one right um, and we'll say owner cannot read property match of undefined Maybe that's not a function. Let me check really quick in my ERC721 contract. So this is kind of how I'm developing a lot right now because I have done quite a bit of Solidity lately, uh, but I don't remember every single thing. So sometimes you have to go look in the actual uh, code of the underlying stuff and check out what it is. Function, owner of token ID so that should have worked um, let me see if that blows up like this oh so that worked let's see if there's anybody who owns two there shouldn't be should be nil right so that's a non-existent token do we have a zero that's a non-existent token that's not a character that makes any sense okay cool so that's basically it so we have bought an NFT. Now, it may not seem like we've done much. Um, it's probably going to be one or two more episodes on this. So the next episode, I need to hook up like the ability to buy multiple, and then maybe in the next episode, or maybe one after that, depending on how long it takes, we're going to actually start showing the images and all that stuff. So I think I'm going to go ahead and cut this here. I'm trying to keep these shorter, like 10 or 15 minutes, uh, as the target. So we're just about there. 
and in the next clip we will get uh more into the ui hooking up all the different uh really there's only a couple things we need to list out all the the owned nfts and we need to uh be able to buy more than one like our code allows so and with all that said i'll talk to you in the next video be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and hit the thumbs up if you like this video talk to you soon